Greetings everyone and welcome back to Frostpunk once more. It's been a while that we've played this game. I've actually covered almost all of the scenarios now on survivor difficulty and on our road to Frostpunk 2 uh, this year I want to yeah I want to revisit this beautiful game and what better way of doing to play this hardcore game than on the highest difficulty possible. So we are going to we're going to jump right into the endless mode. I love this one. So we have the scenarios right that offer you different story bits and are also brutally hard each one of them Themselves. but we're going to go with the endless mode for this one i want to build up a mega city a huge city with all the relics and we want to do good relationships with all the settlements possible and we also want to just get as many people in as possible to survive this endless winter for that we're going to endless mode endurance it is of course the scarce resources bitter cold and frequent blizzards will make our daily life a struggle and we're going to choose the hardest map uh, in my opinion and I think it is that we have this one and that's the flats so last time we played it on the crater and this was not so bad after all because it's everything is relatively close to you on the flats the problem will be that everything is so far away but it will allow us to build a true truly big city that is for customization we're going with extreme on all the parameters we're going to activate the random hazards and we're going to activate the settlements so everything that you can do is to the limit on the hardest map possible at least in my opinion and with that i wish you all the fun and i wish me all the luck that we actually managed to do this if you enjoy my content don't forget to check out my patreon support page and if you want to follow me live then also don't forget to check out my twitch account and without further ado go 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 Alrighty, and here we are now finally in the game. Welcome to Winterborn, a generator a solitary out here. It is a day one right now. We got some, sorry, 80 souls that actually made the journey with us to this uh, generator here. It is negative 20 degrees. This is the warmest it'll ever get. So let's just enjoy the, the warm winds on our skin. Um, it is morning right now. We have a bit of coal, a bit of wood, a bit of steel, some steam cores, and a bit of raw food in our in our storage. And that's about it. And from now on here begins the hardest possible scenario in this game on the hardest settings with hazards available and the settlements enabled as well. The goal is to build a mega city to find all the relics of course to build as many ornaments as possible to automate as much as possible to get as many achievements as possible as well but of course primarily to survive especially the first and the second storm are going to hit us hard and we need to prepare for this right away the first thing of order is we're going to build a workshop right away close to the generator that is going to allow me to do some research here i'm also going to have a look at my resource piles that we have in the surrounding area and we get a few the problem with the flats however and that's one of the main difficulties is it's so far away right everything is far away and every single piece of street will cost me a lot of wood and we need to be very careful about this so for the beginning i'm going to assign people to piles that are relatively far away we do lose some of the productivity because of the distance but i will not have to build a road this far away for a very long time the closest piles we're going to use then for resource gathering posts um, so i can then actually use them but for now let's actually go ahead and assign all my other available workforce that is engineers and workers let's assign them to these piles to gather me some wood some coal and some steel uh, next uh, thing that we do before we unpause the game is we're also going to assign the first law. We have two trees available, the purpose tree and the adaption. The adaption is what we are starting with and we got a lot of choices and every single choice in this game matters very much. And we definitely need to be super careful about that and every single wrong choice can actually break the game for us on this difficulty. Emergency shift, of course it is for the beginning. This will allow us to have 24 hour shifts on my people. It will raise the difficulty, it will raise the discontent already right now. Now these two parameters here are super important for us. Discontent should never reach the maximum. If it does, we actually get an ultimatum. And if the ultimatum runs out, we lose the game. The same goes with hope. If hope reaches zero, uh, people will give us an ultimatum to raise hope again. If we are not able to do this, we end. And in this case here, 
um, it's much harder to raise hope than lower discontent. So we are going to fiddle around with the discontent bar and try to abuse it a bit for us. That is with highest discontent as much as possible. And that means basically that I'm going to have an emergency shift, what we just, you know, enacted on the wood crates. So those poor souls, yeah, they will have to work through the night now out there in the snow, in the cold. They have a little can of fire there and they will have to work through the night to gather me wood because that's life, unfortunately. The workshop is finished, and here we can now assign the first five people, the first five engineers, because only engineers can work here. And with that, we can start the research. Researching is extensive in this game, and once again, super vital to do it right on this difficulty. Otherwise, we will not have the right tech at the right time. Beacon it is for my starting. With that, we can start the exploration of our surrounding area and yeah basically gather resources and also find survivors because this is also something that we need to get cracking asap in the center of the city is the generator the most important structure of this game and we are keeping it offline right now it's shut down because we want to save some coal we don't have enough coal yet to keep it running all the time the generator will provide warmth and security for my people as we can see there is lots of kids now here right unfortunately some of them will die most likely but yeah that's life as well the others will work for us because that's the only way we can also make this work so child labor is something i need to to enforce as well for now they're yeah sitting around here at negative 20 and hoping that they are warm soon researching is starting the work has started so those people are now moving out there and yeah we'll gather us some resources and as we can see resources are coming in now and it is quiet it is quiet. In the beginning, it is so quiet. And it's going to get so nasty soon. So let's just enjoy this for a moment. As people right now just hope that we can somehow survive this mess. The first temperature drop is on the horizon already. On day 4, we are going down to negative 40 degrees. By then, we really need to have some basic stuff sorted out. So this is my first major goal. The first storm will arrive in 14 days and that is a major hit in temperature and also a lot of buildings will be unavailable then. So the storm is our first goal here to survive this and our first big hurdle really. Alright, also looking around, we can do something. We can check out my deposits that we have, right? So I can see that we have two coal deposits here. Um, further outside we can see a huge dead forest that would provide wood for us. And if I move along the edges, we can see that there is a wall drill slot and another wall drill slot over there. We also have a steel slot here and a steel slot, oh, a coal one, a steel slot here. Very far away. This is actually the closest we have together with those two coal deposits. What we use first, we'll see. And with that, the first day is over. I'm going to activate the emergency shift on the workshop now. However, I'm going to reassign those five engineers right now to not work there because otherwise one of them will die. So I'm trying to keep it available now for three hours, unavailable, and then we are reassigning them again to work through the night. Meanwhile, we're going to build a medical post, the first one, because I'm expecting first sick people now in this night. And I'm also going to activate, yeah, our generator. For the first time, It is now provo providing heat. The first level is activated. It is going to consume now coal continuously. We can also check this here. And with that, we have a coal consumption of 144 per day. However, we only produce 135 per day. This means we can't let it run all the time right now. At 10 o'clock, I'm going to reactivate the workshop. For now, these people can actually start working now on that medical post here. And everybody goes to rest, the other ones, except those poor salts. Yeah. They will now have to work through the night in the cold to also provide more wood, because boy, we need wood. We got a request. Captain, people are understandably concerned about the lack of shelter. They are falling ill from sleeping outside in this terrible cold. We'd better do something about it. And yes, I can promise you I'll provide some shelter for 40 people within two days. Let's activate the overdrive. This is a mechanism that allows me to have the generator work above its limits for another temperature limit. 
and this will hopefully reduce the sickness for the people surrounding it because they get it even warmer right so they have it now very comfortable around the generator this should keep sickness low uh next up the medical post has been finished let's assign some five engineers to that because i'm expecting then the first sick in we'll also need to reassign five engineers from this wood pile because those are the ones that are going then to research once it's 10 o'clock What a big map this is, right? It's 10 o'clock. Those five engineers continue now working again in the workshop. And in about four hours, they will finish the beacon for us. We would have other buildings available to us right now. However, we need to save quite a lot of wood for the first beacon. What I can do though is I'm going to build my first work uh, resource gathering post then and we're going to have the first one here and with that street that we need to build for 11 wood this one will be constructed now and will work then tomorrow it's just much safer in general to have those people working in gathering posts than on the piles themselves because it's warmer in the gathering post the risk of falling ill is lower and there we have it the first sick people they're now coming then to treatment in the medical post. We can introduce the next law. The cooldown has run off. And for my next choice, I'm going with the extended shift. So people will have to work longer from now on. That's 14 hours a day. This they will not like, right? So this content goes up once more. Very important that we do this, however, if I want to get more resources in, which we need. So for that, I'm going to not do it for the piles, but we are doing it then for the gathering posts. Generator stress level is now reaching 25%. If this would reach 100%, the generator explodes and the game is over. So we always need to be very careful about that overdrive. And there it is. Our first research has been finished. The beacon. Very good. Next up on the list is the faster gathering right away. We want to speed up uh, well, gathering with the gathering posts. And I can now build the next building, the beacon. 20 wood, 35 steel. The beacon does not to be heated, so I'm building it behind my stockpiles outside of my generator here. We have now more sick than we have capacity. Unfortunately, that's just how things go for the first night. Gathering post has been finished. We can assign the extended shift to this right away. And I'm also going to assign now the some people from it. Uh, yeah, it's probably the ones that will then leave this wood, these wood crates here. Because they've been working through the night. Once they finish with that, we can reassign them right away to the gathering post. It's 5 o'clock in the morning. Day 2 it is. Temperature stays the same for now. We can turn off the generator now. It will heat a bit more, right? So it's taking a bit of time before it actually lose all, loses it, all its heat. So that's okay. But it will not consume coal anymore. Beacon has been built. This is a pretty important moment. So now we just wait for this wood crit here to run out. And then we can assign 10 workers to the gathering post and 5 workers to the scout. We can also be a bit more precise and go actually with that right now so now i have five workers 40 wood and we can start the scouting and this is super vital right finding the right points of interest around winterborne is going to be vital for us and the rocky promontory it is as my first target it's going to take a full day to get over there but hopefully we get some resources from it it all now depends on these wood crates here they're running out in a couple of minutes the workshop continues to work. We haven't lost anyone during the night. That's perfect. And there it is. The wood crate is out. Those people move home now. Not all of them. Five of them will go to the steel. And the other ten will go to the gathering post. And they're going to work here now. I could be super cruel and assign them to another emergency shift now again. But I'm not doing this. Unfortunately, because we have some sick... Only 8 of them can work right now, leading to a total efficiency of 80%, but that's okay.
It is afternoon on day two and we have the first hungry people now. Problem is, I don't have any food yet, only raw food. So for tomorrow I should have the food then ready, because hungry 24 hours later they're starving and then they're dying. And we of course don't want that, especially since we have food available. So food production is my next bigger task now. The next research is coming along, faster gathering. There it is. So that gathering post here is now producing more resources than overall. Next research. It's getting a bit tricky now where we want to go. The thing is, we have a temperature drop incoming. So I'm going to research the heaters now. This will allow us to heat uh, resource buildings like this one here, right? And since we have that temperature drop, this is actually one that we need. It is now almost evening of the second day. It's still quiet. The sun is shining. Negative 20 degrees remains for us, for yet, for now. And let's activate the generator once more. The warmth you can feel on your skin. And we continue on with the next construction. I have this promise to provide some shelters for at least 40 people. So that's 40 wood that we just used there now, right? Let's also put the extended shift for the workshop, the gathering post, and the wood crates. So they continue producing a bit more wood. We will also now need a cookhouse. For that, unfortunately, I will need to readjust some things because that street is a bit positioned not so good. So that's something I need to do. Construction starts. The next law is ready. I would like to go for soup as my next law. Soup is weaker than normal rations, right? But we get more food out of the, the raw food. It makes this content go up, though. It is now past 8 o'clock, so what I can do too is I'm going to dismantle this road here real quick for now. And we're going to put the cookhouse in here. So every building needs to be connected with the generator. In this case here, this would not be working now, but it's not working anyway because it's night. And there's the first tents. So the first people get their home, they can sleep in beds. And they also have are protected from the winds. This will do for 20 degrees right now. With negative 40, these might not be enough anymore, but we'll see. Well, the promise has been fulfilled, and with that we get a bit of hope in again. I will also build now the next gathering post, because once negative 40 hits us, no one should be outside on the piles anymore. We want to have everyone working in gathering posts. So this is the next one. The cookhouse is finished. Now, where do we get those people from, right? I will reassign some free people from the steel and have them working then in the cookhouse. So tomorrow, we'll get the first soup in. By now, almost all of the people are hungry. And in the middle of the night, we have the next uh, gathering post ready. Let's put the extended shift on it. And those people here, once they have depleted the steel wreckage, will move over then to the gathering post. Five o'clock in the morning, I can shut down the generator once more. Still heating a bit, right? So heating is still fine. For another two hours. A new work workday has started and extended shifts now kick in in most of my buildings. And also the cookhouse starts in one hour, and then we'll get some food. Get to work. Food, people. There's plenty to do. As expected, the steel pallet is now out. I can reassign those 10 people to the gathering post. And they start their work now, collecting wood, coal and steel. By now, also, as we can see, the soup is coming in and people can finally eat something at the cookhouse. And the generator is offline once more for this day. And it's the last day that we are turning it off. By tomorrow, we will need to constantly have it run.
Oh, very good. The scouts have reached the first site. We found several frozen bodies in sleeping bags around the remains of a fire. These people had plenty of fuel and food, but the cold got to them anyway. But at least 48 wood and 23 raw food. Let's get this home right away. 14 hours it takes them. It's important to note that usually, not always, but usually, the first point of interest holds something, the second none. So the snow dunes most likely have nothing. So for me, it's not really valid to go to this location. I'd rather take the wood and the raw food back home. All right, we still have two available workers. Um, to really squeeze out everything, we could assign them to these wood crates, since we need more wood. The next wood pile is gone, right? So in this case here, I'm also going to quickly assign them to something so that at least they work for now, and that's these wood crates here. It's not ideal, but it'll have to do. A new law I can sign? This is going to be a tricky one now. The soup was easy. The next law is not so easy. We have different routes that we can take. Fighting arena would lower our discontent. Radical treatment would open up the overcrowding so I can have more patients in my medical posts. The corpse disposal would allow me to have organ transplants and faster sick recovery. However, we need a dead person first before this actually goes into effect. And then we have the child labor here with safe jobs so I can get more workforce. But right now I don't have that many workplaces. So what do we need? For this I need to check my discontent real quick. It's not that super bad yet. I'm going to have another emergency shift tonight. That means discontent will go up greatly again. Together with the radical treatment, this could actually tip us over. Together with the negative temperature drop, we will get even more discontent, so it would be very hard for me to actually get on track then. So I think the safest route is now the fighting arena. Or we activate the overdrive just for one night to get temperatures down. Yeah, let's do this. Let's actually go for radical treatment now. And this will raise the, uh, the discontent here once more. As I said, difficult decision there right now. At least the food is in. I don't need that many workers now at the cookhouse. We have some available engineers that we're going to use then soon. The coal pile is still going to work a bit. Next up, we can already prepare the next medical post. The heaters have been researched. Perfect, just on time because we get the next temperature drop. Next up on my list would be the sawmill. I'm going the sawmill route because we have lots of dead trees on this map and we can use this to get wood in. It's almost evening again. And it's the evening of the next temperature drop. We have several routes here once again that we can take. Either I build some shelters now for the remaining people. Something I actually need to do. And something... Hmm. Or we build now our next gathering post. Once again, a very heavy decision. I'm deciding for the gathering post. We're going over here and we're building the next gathering post for coal. Gathering. As we can see, unfortunately, I cannot reach the steel piles here. So it will be for the coal only. And this is going to be a major industrial hub here for us then. You can't see this yet. But I cannot afford that many roads. So this is one of the few big roads that I'm going to build, right? And here we can have then wood industry, coal industry, um, all pumped together for one nice, efficient industrial hub. 23 wood in total, 30 wood, just the street costs me. And with that, we are almost out of wood now. And it's a pretty big, long production. Let's activate the generator. This time it's going to stay activated. Providing warmth. Sleeping outside. And I'll provide shelter for another 17 people within one day. And this is something I can actually do. Let's also accept this. Now, it's that moment of the emergency shift. We're going to use the systems here to the maximum. Uh, going to leave them working for another half an hour because we have the extended shift anyway. So that's about now. Then I'm going to turn it off to get some of that discontent back again, right? Then I'm going to put them on emergency shift. 
and then I'm going to put them off right so I don't lose any of them for another three hours so at 11 o'clock we will be able then to reactivate that workshop and then it's working through the night this actually saved me a lot of discontent and with that we also um, will not get to that ultimatum That road construction will take some time. It's good that we're doing it now at negative 20 and not at negative 40. That was one of my primary motivations for this. The scouts will have another four hours and then they will return with lots of wood. So this gives me then the, the wood that I need for the tents tomorrow. Actually, we could also start with those tents now. Once again, very important, the placement. Where do we want to expand our town? Because we have no space in the in inner ring anymore, right? So all the tents we built now will hot not have direct heating in the beginning. So these guys will have it cold, but at least they have a shelter. Uh, let's start here with the first two that we can still build. And with that, we're completely out of wood. And it's the night of day three to day four. And negative 40 degrees are incoming now. There it is, the scouts have arrived, 48 wood, 23 raw food, and we're going to immediately send the scouts off again, this time to the abandoned sawmill, there's definitely some wood over there. It's going to take them another day to get there. At least we got raw food for another day to, li to live, but of course food production will now be my most important one. Let's reassign, oh, shelter promise fulfilled. And let's also reassign those engineers to the workshop again. The next medical post is ready. The uh, uh, remaining engineers we can assign. And with that, we at least offer medical support now for up to 10 people. By now, the constructions are in its final form for the scattering post over there. Lots of sick people at this point, unfortunately. And there's the gathering post. It is important now that we put anyone off that is still working in the piles, right? So no one should be working in piles anymore. And with that, we have 23 available workers. 10 of them we can assign right away to the scattering post. The next day is dawning. And yeah, this time around, we cannot deactivate that generator anymore. It will have to keep burning. Lucky us, we have a good coal production now, thanks to having this gathering post over here activated. Just on time. Also, we're going to activate the heater now for the gathering post, for this gathering post, and for this gathering post. This will raise the temperature level, and it will make sure that those people don't have a chilly cold. And there it is. Negative 40. And with that, it's at least now chilly, but not cold in the gathering post. This is a lower risk of falling ill, super important, and just on time. And with that, it's important also to finish the last two houses for my people. The next law is ready for action. Once again, a tricky one, not so much this time around, but because I think overcrowding is the only valid choice that we have right now. And this will increase the capacity of the medical facilities by 100%. It will increase, however, also discontent quite a bit. But with that, everybody has now medical treatment. And it's a long treatment. Up to 24, up to two days of treatment per person. So these people are not going to work for us anytime soon. And as we can see, this is the difference. This tent here has chilly temperatures, and this one here has cold temperatures. There's also snow covered on this one. Just because it does not receive any heating.
Let's also make sure that extended shifts are on on all my gathering posts. Super important at this point. We need to get these resources in. The cookhouse has finished the remaining raw food. And now we face a new problem that we don't have any raw food coming in anymore, right? So now we need to work on food because tomorrow we'll get the first hungry people and by the day after tomorrow we'll get the first starving people. So we need to get stuff done by then. And for this, we'll need to keep that workshop running all the time because we need that tack. The sawmill is about to be finished. That's a super important tack for us. There it is. Next hack, super important now, as I said, is going to be the food. Unfortunately, as you can see, there is no food production here. So we need to go for the drawing boards now. That's tier 1 production then, tier 1 research. And this will cost me 50 wood just to unlock this row. Quite a lot. And this will bring me down now to 5 wood only. So I'm going to make especially sure that the remaining wood that we have is fully utilized right now. And there we have now the sawmill as well. That's super important. We can start the production of this right away. And let's just make sure that we actually have the right position here because we want to get the sawmill into the steam hub then here as well and into a shrine building later on for maximum efficiency gains. This looks like a good location to me. Unfortunately, we don't have wood enough for these streets. We'll need to wait a bit there. Now we have a bit of wood, and let's connect the sawmill with my road network. So they can build this, and this will provide me another source of wood now. The last tent is about to finish, so no one will have to, to sleep outside during this night. It's way too cold for that. So far so good. We are surviving day four. The sawmill is about to be finished and now we have to work towards our food production. And we're doing this in the next episode on our way to the next and the first storm. I hope you enjoyed this one. Frostpunk extreme on the highest level possible. Stay tuned.